I'm Daniel, and this is Induction Heating. Hey, wait a second. We're missing someone. Hey, Vishnu, where are you? What the shit, I'm right here. Huh? Oh. Okay, so as Daniel has said, today our group will be talking about induction heating. Now, what is induction heating? Induction heating, to put it simply, is a form of non-contact heating. Essentially what that means is that there is no contact, there is no physical contact between the heating element and the element that is to be heated. These two elements are separated, they are not in physical contact. One way that you can think about induction heating is as wireless heating, which is similar to wireless charging. Yes, you still do need to put the phone against the wireless charger, but there is no direct physical contact between the battery and the charger. The battery and the charger are separated. This is similar to induction heating. The element that you want to heat and your heating element are not in physical contact. They are separated. Now, let's invite Vishnu and Junyik to talk a bit more about induction heating and its general working principles. Now, induction heating works based on the principles of electromagnetic induction. Now, what it means is that a magnetic field is needed for induction heating to take place. This magnetic field is obtained by passing current through a conductor, such as a copper wire. As current flows through the copper wire, a magnetic field is produced around it. For induction heating to happen, however, this current needs to be constantly reversed. By constantly changing the direction of the flow of the current, in or in other words, by applying an alternating current which gets a magnetic field that is constantly changing. This constantly changing magnetic field leads to any currents uh, being produced within the object that is being heated which causes the object to heat up. Alright, now before we get into the actual part of industrial heating and its applications, we must first understand two very important laws, starting with Faraday's law which will be explained by Daniel. So first of all, let's have a look at one of the principles essential to induction heating which is Faraday's law of induction or Faraday's law. Faraday's law is the basic law of electromagnetism which predicts the on how a magnetic field will act with an electrical circuit to produce an electromotive force or EMF. It is the fundamental operating principle used in transformers, inductors, generators and solenoids. Now Faraday's law states that the induced EMF generated depends on the rate of change of magnetic flux, hence this formula. N is the number of turns, D phi is the change in flux, and D t, d t, t, t okay, is the change in time. As the magnetic flux changes over time by d phi over dt, the value of the EMF will change. The number of turns times the rate of change of flux per second will change the EMF. And now, with that being said, let's invite Dennis to give us his explanation. Another law of electromagnetic induction is Lenz law. What is Lenz law? Well, an induced EMF always acts to produce an induced current. The induced current is always flowing in such a direction in order to create magnetic flux to oppose the change in flux. What does that mean? Let me show you an example. Let's say we have a magnet here and we're trying to bring it closer and closer to the solenoid. This magnet creates an external flux directed to the right. What happens next is a current will be induced in order to oppose, in order to counteract this increasing external flux. According to our right hand grid rule, the current will flow such direction and the magnetic field lines will flow from here to here, making this the North Pole. What happens when we have North and North Poles together means that a force of repulsion will exist here in order to oppose the motion of the magnet which is coming closer and closer towards the solenoid. What happens when we have another situation where we're trying to bring the magnet away from the solenoid? Well, the current will flow in the opposite direction, making this the south pole and creating a force of attraction here. Lenz law is also a form of conservation of energy. 
You see, work is done in order to overcome the opposing force. Therefore, potential energy of the changing magnetic field is transformed into electrical potential energy, hence the creation of induced current. Now let me pass the time to Vishnu. Do you know how high-speed trains or roller coaster slow down to a halt? Well, I'm here to introduce you to how it works. When we have, when we want something to stop, we apply the simple signs of friction. You slow to a halt when two surfaces rub together, but they do have a big drawback. Every time you use them, they wear a little bit, and that means they're extremely expensive. What's the alternative? One option is to slow things down with the force of electromagnetism instead of friction. And we are talking about eddy currents. What's the alternative? One option is to slow things down with the force of electromagnetism instead of friction. And we are talking about eddy currents. What if the conductors you're moving through the magnetic field isn't a wire that allows the electricity to flow neatly away? You still get electric currents, but instead of flowing off somewhere, they swirl about inside the material. These are what we call eddy currents. What are eddy currents? Eddy currents are loops of electrical currents induced within conductors due to their relative motion between the magnetic field and the conductor. They can't flow away, so they swirl around instead, dissipating their energy as heat. Now that we are done with the boring part, Let's move on to some real-life example of eddy current. Right here, what happens when you drop a magnet through a copper pipe? Now reminder, copper is a non-ferromagnetic material. What does this mean? It means that when you bring a magnet close to a copper material, it will not stick to it at all. Same goes to um, lead and aluminium. Let's watch what happens. <laughs> I have a pipe. Why don't we drop something through it and just make sure it's empty, right? Okay, 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 this is not a magnet. So this isn't a magnet, but let's see what happens when we drop it through. Mm. Okay, so what's going to happen if we drop this magnet down the pipe? Does it like... It kind of suits. I think it's the powers of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see from the video, the magnets took a much longer time for them to fall through the pipe. Now why is this so? Well, eddy currents are the reason. When we have a magnet moving through a pipe, we also have a magnetic field moving through a conductor. And that generates the eddy current. As we know from the laws of electromagnetism, a current flowing through a conductor produces a magnetic field. So, eddy currents generate their own magnetic field. And from the lens law, we know that the magnetic field will try to oppose its cause, which is the falling magnet. So, eddy currents and their own magnetic field will try to produce an upward force to stop the magnets from falling down. And this produces the magnetic breaking effect, which is why the magnets took a much longer time for it to fall down. Yes! Actually, besides moving the magnet itself, we can also move the conductor to produce the same exact effect. Let's watch some other videos, shall we? We don't have to move just the magnet. We could move the conductor. All right. Okay. Now I want to show you this little apparatus I built here is a little dangerous <laughs> because this is your erector set. It, it is. It's kind of like a little. Can you hold this up here for me? Okay. Just stick your finger there and hold it. Let me show you what happens if we make a mistake. Oh no! It's a guillotine. Let it let it fall. Um, they're gonna have to take a look here. This is a carrot, a dangling carrot. It's a carrot. Huh. Okay. We don't want to have that happen. Okay. <laughs> so don't put your fingers down there. Got okay? it. <laughs> but now. We can use this effect, this, it's called eddy currents. Okay. We can use that effect. I've got four strong magnets here. Just gonna lower those down 
to where the plate is. Do the same thing. Hold that up there again, Tony. All right. Me, if you could. Yeah, I'll, I'll stick to this part. Okay, go ahead. Just let it go. What? With your hand there? Oh. <laughs> All right. The check Wait a second. What happens if you damage the conductor itself? Well, spoilers ahead. Eddy current will not flow, and the magnetic breaking effect will not be present. If we damage the plate by putting some slits in it like oh, that, yeah. the circular okay. currents can't flow. Okay. okay. So if we do that again, I'll keep my fingers back here. Wow, 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 that is interesting. Now that you know the basic working principles of eddy currents, I will pass my time to other group members to explain some applications that uses eddy currents to function. See ya! Now, how does induction cooking function? Induction cooking uses an alternating current which directly hits pots and pans uh, through magnetic induction. The components of induction cooking are the conductive utensil, the ceramic top plate, the power coil, the electronic supply, and the induction hob, which is made up by the ceramic top plate as well as the power coil. The conductive utensil must be made up of iron or stainless steel. If not, it will just it just wouldn't work. To test whether the conductive utensil is ferromagnetic, you need to use a magnet so that you will be able to stick to the bottom of the pan. The induction hub contains a coil of copper wire which is underneath the ceramic top plate and when the pot is placed on the ceramic top plate, an alternating electric current is passed through it. The resulting oscillating magnetic field creates a magnetic flux. This creates an eddy current which flows through the resistance of the pot on the pan which causes it to heat up. Now this concept of induction cooking uh, obeys Faraday's law as the, re the fluctuating magnetic field which will produce an electromotive force that induces a current uh, in the pan which causes it to heat up. One of the advantages of induction cooking stoves is that it heats up 25-50% to 50 faster and distributes heat more evenly than traditional cooktops. Another advantage is it is safer because it only heats up the pan and it doesn't have a ring of fire to heat up the surroundings. Besides that, it is easier to clean. This is because the induction cooktop is a flat surface which does not bake any spills that occur on it, like baked cheese or egg. It's a real pain to clean it. Another thing is, it emits less heat, which is more comfortable for some people who can't take the heat. However, for every advantage, there's a disadvantage. One disadvantage of induction cooking is it is expensive because the technology is relatively new and it costs more to produce than traditional cooktops. Another thing is only specific pans can be used to cook with the induction cooktop. If not, cooking is near to impossible. Besides that, induction cooktops create a whirring sound like which is very, very annoying for those people who have sensitive ears. Another thing, which is the most important part of this, is that it needs electricity. Without electricity, you cannot cook any food. Apocalypse happen, no electricity, power supply cut, don't know how to make a fire, you gone case. Alright, and now I'm going to talk about another application of induction heating, which is the application of induction heating in the field of welding. Now, what is welding? For those of you guys who don't know what welding is, this and this and this and this are photos of welding. Essentially, welding is a process where two pieces of metal are joined together by melting the edges and then fusing them together. Now, the photos that you saw just now were photos of traditional welding, which is still widely used today, as it is simple and easy to use. However, recently, more welding companies, more people in the welding industry, have started to use induction heating as a new method of welding metal together. Now, these are a few photos of what induction welding looks like. So, as you can see, there are no more devices that are actually emitting flames that cause the metal to heat up. There is no more 
fire. But what you do have is a coil that is surrounding the metal that is to be heated, as you can see over here. Now, let's talk a bit about how induction welding works, as it is called in the welding industry. Now, the way that induction welding works is actually really, really simple, and it's very similar to the way that induction cooking works. Now, first of all, you need a conductive coil. I'm going to use the famous old copper coil. And then, you need something to be heated up. For example, this steel bar. Now, insert the steel bar into the copper coil. That way, we get the coil surrounding the steel bar. And now, this copper coil will obviously be connected to a power supply. This power supply will provide the current that's needed to create a magnetic field. Now, the current that we must use is of course alternating current, not direct current, because we need the magnetic field to keep changing. Now, why is this so? This is because, as Faraday's law stated, you get a voltage, or rather an electromotive force, only when there is a change of magne magnetic flux. If you use a direct current, there is no changing magnetic flux. The magnetic flux will just go one way. But if you use alternating current, it will go one way, and then it will go the other way, and then it will go the other way again, and it will keep repeating that process. This will give us the change in magnetic flux that we need, and this in turn will give us the EMF or voltage that we need. Now, why is this voltage important? This voltage is important because this voltage will be what will give us the induced current which in this case will turn out to be the eddy current which is within the steel bar, which I'll get to later. Now, current equals to V over R. We have R, which is the resistance of the steel bar, but we don't have V. How do, how do we get V? From Faraday's law, as I've explained just now. And this is why Faraday's law is very important in induction heating, and in this case, induction welding. So, now that we have our V and our R, we can get an induced current, which in this case will turn out to be the eddy current. So let's bring back, um, poof, our battery, copper coil, and a steel bar. So what happens is that our steel bar right now is surrounded by a constantly changing magnetic field. This magnetic field will then cause current to be induced within the steel bar. And this current that we're talking about is actually eddy current. Now, these eddy currents will then cause the steel to heat up. And it will cause it to glow bright red, such as the steel bar in this photo right here. So, after our steel bar has become hot enough, it will now be welded to another steel bar, which could either be completely cold or hot as well. Now, in the field of induction welding, Lenz law doesn't see much practical use. However, you cannot have Faraday's law without Lenz law. This is because Lenz law is the law that dictates what direction the induced current flows in. Now, according to Lenz law, the induced current will always flow in such a way that the magnetic field that it produces will oppose the change in magnetic flux that produced it. And because of that, there isn't much to talk about Lenz law in terms of induction welding. And with that, I will now have Dano to explain the advantages and disadvantages of using induction heating in the welding industry. The advantages of induction welding is that it is easy and convenient to operate as you can adjust to the working frequency or the power as per the requirement. It can also heat up work pieces on a certain part only instead of the whole one, hence the high precision. And the heating speed is fast too. However, the disadvantages of induction heating is that it only applies to certain material and it requires high capital investment. Future uses include applying it to vaporizers. As it uses induction heating, it means the vaporizers will rapidly heat up and there's also no need to change the colors of it. To add on, induction heating is more energy efficient than most other methods, which leads to manufacturers to adopt it in their production methods. Mm -hmm.